Hi, and welcome to this lecture on environmental adaptation of animals. This is the second video on our fashionable omics section and dealing with transcriptomics. In the previous video, I described how the genomics is working. It's dealing with gene structure. And now this transcriptomics is dealing with gene function, meaning gene activity. And that's why transcriptomics is measuring messenger RNA. When we have a physical exercise, like over here, sitting on the on the <clears throat> Hi, and welcome to this lecture on environmental adaptation of animals. This is the second video on our fashionable omics section and dealing with transcriptomics. The previous video was showing you that okay the genomics is related on the gene structure and now this transcriptomics is dealing with gene function so meaning the gene activity and that's why transcriptomics is measuring the messenger RNA so when we have a physical exercise we our thick muscles are working for example to extend the leg and then we have a rubber band that is preventing this extension. If we are continuing this kind of exercise for 90 minutes every day for five days, there could be some microscopic changes in our muscle structure. But before that, there could be also some gene activity changes in our muscles. And therefore, if we are measuring the messenger RNA, we can see that there can be several different kinds of changes. Some changes are happening fast after the exercise, like the stress responses. And over the, here you can see over here that these genes that are dealing with stress responses, the activity of these genes, meaning the, how much messenger RNA exists, they are very drastically upregulated. But then we can have also genes that are active one or two hours later that are increasing the messenger RNA related on these genes a little bit later and not so drastically. And even some other genes that are active four hours or eight hours after the exercise. So that's why it could be quite difficult to measure with traditional ways that, okay, what gene we want to detect and when do we want to detect it? Because some messenger RNA levels can be low, but if they are long lasting compared on, on this metabolic or uh, mitochondrial enzyme activity, when we are having the second exercise 24 hours later, this message, there exists still some messenger RNA from the previous exercise. So there is a cumulative phenomenon. And this transcriptomics or transcription profiling can be used to reveal the activity of different genes, but unlike the quantitative PCR, when we, where we are comparing one gene activity to another gene activity that is a reference gene. Now we are comparing thousands of genes at the same time. And for example, over here we can see then that, okay, there are several different genes that are upregulated and only some of them are related on metabolic activity. How does, does it work? Well, we, we need two different setup of cells cells in condition 1 and cells in condition 2. We isolate the messenger RNA and mark it, we label it. So that's why with condition 1, this messenger RNA can be with one color. And then with this condition 2, it's with another color. And then when this messenger RNA is binding, in these DNA spots with this layer. We can then get it visualized. 
So are there in these DNA spots only the messenger RNA from condition 1 or from condition 2? Or are they both present? So that's why when comparing thousands of different genes, we can see that in some cases there is a green dots. So only from one condition there exists this gene and then red that okay only on one and another condition uh, it's uh, these cells are expressing and then there are yellows or that okay in both ca cases they are expressing so the, so they are emitting both green and and, and red light and okay, the mixture of that is yellow and how they it's it's working then. so let's have some examples well with exercises in, in humans that was just done like that, okay, exercising the leg muscles, they were having about 6,000 different genes and about 120 was upregulated. So the exercise is increasing mitochondrial biogenesis, tolerance of oxidative stress, ion transportation in these muscles. Or we can have the same um, way to explore what happens when the tissues are freezing in the frogs. They were testing over 90,000 19, genes and over 200 of them were changing. Well, there was a change in, drastical change in uh, glycos metabolism, we will discuss on this later, but also on antioxidant defense or uh, ion transportation. Or we can test that, okay, on the killifish that was living there in the east coast of, of, of North America. How, what happens in the high temperatures? They were testing 5,000 different genes. And, okay, high temperatures was increasing heat shock proteins, cell membrane, protein synthesis, nitrogen metabolism. So it, uh, it's not only one way to adapt in different uh, conditions. And also, when the rainbow trout is swimming long distance, it's affecting on protein synthesis or some functionality or ion transportation. Or when eels are um, migrating from fresh water to seawater. So now their environment has much more salt. So surprise, surprise, they are in modulating their ion transportation or cell protection and signaling and structural proteins. Or when the honey beans are exposed to uvelin hormone, they are the human hormone is affecting on RNA synthesis or, or processing and uh, pro, uh, protein metabolism, etc. And even when the sea urchin is modulated by the ozone acidification, its effects on several different parts. And you can see that, okay, in all these examples, they were testing at least 1000 genes at the same time. With the traditional quantitative uh, PCR, this would take ages or even longer time. And one of the interesting things is that, okay, actually they can reveal quite nicely daily rhythms. We will discuss on daily rhythm and how it's kept with our uh, inner clocks a little bit later. But also over here, there's a, a mosquito which has that, okay, there are some enzymes that are related on the, uh, to, uh, to, to get rid of toxic waste. They are increased in night time. It's nothing to do with the daily clock mechanisms. And this can, can be then used to say that, okay, if we are having a pesticide in the early morning, they have less these enzymes than in the night time. And when tested in several different animals, there can be even 40% of the genes can have some kind of circadian cycle, so meaning about 24 hour 
cycle. So some are upregulated in nighttime, some are upregulated in daytime, etc. And quite often these genes are not synchronous. So over here we can see that the uh, the first one or, or the middle one in the in the mosquito is upregulated in the beginning of the night, and the blue one is upregulated in the end of the night. So they can have some individual variation. So they can have peak at the diff different time of the day of the night. So that makes this transcriptomics quite interesting. Thank you.